Hi, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of Carnival of Randomness. This is, uh, we have our guest host, Ken, with us today. Hi. Hey, everybody. And this Ken. is coming out a day after DD, right? I'm sorry, the day after DD, right? Yeah, well, today is, uh, yes, it will be it coming out. Tomorrow. It's coming today out is DD tomorrow. Today is DD. This will be coming out tomorrow. So this, I guess, is our DD special. This is our So, D-Day. what do we do? We imported somebody from France. Hi, Nina. Hello. Do you have 99 Luft balloons? <laughs> you no. probably don't get the reference, I bet. No. <laughs> no, you would. <laughs> don't, don't, just don't. 99 and we have we're very glad. Luft Ballon. It was a song by a girl named Nina, and there were two versions. One was German, one was French. It was a ma- or was English rather. It was a massive hit with a hit video, and the song really stunk. I knew the German version. Yeah, yeah. yeah Neu- 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 Luft Ballon. I didn't know her name was Nina. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now you do. <laughs> well, you know what they say. I got ninety nine problems, but a Luft Balloon ain't one. And now we have heard uh, Julie is back with us. Hello, Julia. Hey, good to be here. And we're very around. thrilled because this is so hard to get this guest. She's all over the place. Woo-hoo. Uh, Grace Browning from the RPO. Hi, Grace. Hey, Grace. Hello, everybody. How did you come up? Thanks to, for having me. You are the head harpist now. What's them? How did you come to all this? And I know you're doing. You're in Denver. You're in Santa Fe. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, it's so funny. I, I, I just got to Rochester almost three years ago. Feels like a lifetime, a good lifetime. Um, and um, before that, I was in Dallas playing with the opera. Um, I literally had never even been to Texas before the audition. <laughs> And I was like, you know what? It's sort of like the Midwest of the South, you know? Um, and great, great, great but music. Bigger. bigger. Everything's bigger in Everything's Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, and I spent some time in Houston, too, playing with the symphony, which was so fun. And then before that, I was in Miami Beach, and I never thought I would live there. Got to play with the New World Symphony. Um, but way, way, way before that, I was actually here in Rochester at the Eastman School of Music. Now you didn't um, stay at the Eastman. I did no. not stay, but I had two great years there, and then I went to Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, where I, I studied at the music school at um, the university. And, you know, I'm glad I ended up in the north. I'll tell you that. I mean, obviously, I love Rochester for, like, a billion reasons, but... Um, the weather, especially. The weather I really do love, actually. I find the cold exhilarating. Do you? Yeah. I just love it. It's like, God love I'm you. alive, you know? God I mean, love you. I mean, you got to bundle. you got to get used to bundling, and you just have to get over it. Bundle and go, you know? Winter is not that cold in France, is it? Uh, I know in my region it's raining a lot. We don't have snow, so that was something new. <laughs> but it rains a lot, and it's not as cold as here. So. so you had to get used to some stuff, too. I had to get used to the snow, especially, um, you know, yeah. I went skiing with my parents a few years ago, but I've never seen that much snow in a city, you know? Yeah. <laughs> to go to school on the bus in the morning with mm. six inches of snow, and you know, with my boots, I was like, what's happening to uh. me? <laughs> and, and Grace, you really prepare, because one of the things I saw, and you you either did your hair or wore a really good wig as Princess Leia when you did the oh Star my Wars stuff. Uh. <laughs> oh, those, you couldn't miss those, it, for goodness sake. Oh, that was so fun. I found this amazing... Um, headband um, f- on Amazon, of course, because of course, where else do you get these you things? Um, this hair? And it came with like two little hair nets built in. Um, and uh, man, I mean, it was a little, it got stuck in the pins on, on the harp sometimes. <laughs> so that was, that added for some more excitement. But yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited we get to go back and play now. I mean, it's been, we actually, I mean, RPO just, we just kicked off our first live in-person concert last week um yeah this past week um uh, it was first live concert in 16 months with a new music director an incoming music yes director. andreas and how Delfs. do you like maestro Delfs? he is absolutely a dream uh we really could not have asked for anyone more experienced more kind uh, more positive uh, more inspiring i mean he's He's, he's the real deal. And, you know, we've had an ongoing, you know, relationship yeah. with him over all the years, right? I mean, right. when was the first time you met Andreas? You know, it's been, it was years ago. And um, they asked me, I was honored to be asked to do this sort of large videotaped, long-form interview with him. Oh. And we did it at um, Good Luck, an Empty Good Luck. And, so great. And... Uh, it was like old home week seeing him again. But when they said, "Do you know? Do you think you know who got the job?" and I said, "Yeah, I'm Dari Stelz." And she said, <laughs> Wait she a said minute. "How'd you do that? How did you know? How'd you, how'd you I do know." That? I said, like, "Well, okay. So there are a few things that happened that made this hard. 
And and it was all pandemic related because oh, yeah. that whole season was supposed to be essentially auditions. That's right. For a whole number That's of right. different conductors, none of whom mm -hmm. were going to be able to do it. It to was all it was all canceled. Now what do you do? Well, you need to have somebody who knows the orchestra, mm -hmm. who knows the repertoire, who is available. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And he lives in Trumansburg. That's and right. mm -hmm. and um and who the orchestra immediately likes and 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 I knew that the orchestra was really crazy about him and yeah. and so I just put That's you right. know two and two and two and two and two, two and two and two and said, <laughs> yeah you gotta be Andreas Jones and I just love him well and and here's the funny thing too is that we hired him before the pandemic actually you know he was lined up ready to go and then it just again like the way that the cookie crumbled it was like wow this couldn't have been more perfect so so yeah we're gonna be yeah, back we're gonna be, oh my gosh you look at you you got the season brochure <laughs> woo -woo. yeah and he's really a great season um, oh my god i'm already the, looking stuff the, the, yeah, friends was, go to okay so obviously Montgomery. oh okay that's right we are featuring so many amazing black um composers yeah this um also aapi composers oh my gosh that's right that you are so prepared so we have here a clip from the democrat and chronicle uh, we're so grateful for this feature um rpo announces next truth is of no color event so i'll tell you a little bit about this series Herb smith told us some bit about oh, it okay too, so which herb already to... told you a little no, bit tell us that's about right it. that's right um well each month um we you could produce... see the part i didn't do on the crossword puzzle oh. i get the words here <laughs> yeah. oh, okay it's okay it's all right <laughs> it's, it's for it's for good um so this series is monthly it is free um it is streaming online um and again you can just basically just go to rpo.org to, to 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 access and, and download the series and it's so wonderful um uh, one of the things that i think is maybe has been a, a benefit of sort of moving virtual and re-examining the concert experience is that we are doing more concerts that are of a slightly shorter length, you know, 45 minutes or an hour for our for some of these chamber programs. And that's the other thing, too. It's chamber music as opposed to full orchestra. Like, obviously, we will never replace, you know, I mean, full orchestra is really the, the bread and butter here. But what a fun experience for us to get to do si these these different experiences to be featured as soloists and chamber musicians and to connect with people in our community. Yeah, but oh. Mahler's second in a chamber form is just not going to work. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> One See, person that's being why like, we have you on because exactly. I never would have thought of that. Four singers. <laughs> Four singers. <laughs> Ken, what do you want to say? Is Herb still involved with the Gateway Brass yeah, he is. Project? That's there, right. There's going to be, and I know what it is, but I can't say. But there's going to be a big Gateways announcement coming up. But yeah, Herb is still involved with the Gateways. Because they were at and the last Jazz Fest at Catch Hall, I recall. It was terrific. Yeah. Oh, it's, that's it's a, a beautiful The Gateways space. Festival is a, is a terrific um, thing. But they've got, there, there are some big changes and things they're going to be doing. So keep your eye on gatewaysfestival.org. Jazz fests are interesting because I went up to Ottawa to see my friend Nestor. He's in this Cuban band and unfortunately at the time with the things going on, they wouldn't let them back in the States. So I went up to see them in Toronto and we went up to see them in Ottawa and the, the headline band at the Ottawa Jazz Fest was Stone Temple Pilots, that known jazz band. So, oh, when we were... When oh, we were, I love Stone Temple Pilots. Well, my husband, my husband was <laughs> Was the president no, yeah. of, of Prindy, of what was named called Prindy Public Radio News Directors Incorporated, and um, he was doing a site check for um, he did a site check for Toronto and and for Montreal, wanting to take this national organization international. He, we went to Montreal for the site check, and we happened to be there during the Jazz Fest. And noticed that they had this great jazz player, Patti Smith, playing. Mm. Oh, you mean, <laughs> like almost the same name as the punk rocker. Amazing. Oh, the I one love thing it. I want to ask, I've been asking musicians, mm -hmm. that's why a lot, of music, a lot of instruments looked at me and said, you better do a podcast instead of playing. Why harp? Did you always. Mm. Want to play harp, or did it? Did this it say? Did it go? Question. Did it say, Grace, come to us, come to us? <laughs> or were, were you always like, <laughs> were you always drawn, or right. were you always drawn to well, it? Well, this is you know, it's so interesting how how we end up matching with our instruments. Sometimes it's like we find them, and sometimes they find us. And I think mine was more the latter. Um, and it was mostly thanks to my mother, who um, was not a harpist, but she was a, 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 and is a beautiful singer, and she, you know, played some piano, and she always kind of wished that she had maybe started younger, you know? Um, so when I, so when, I mean, you know, I started piano at six, I was singing in choir when I was three, you know? And then basically, 
<laughs> my mom was at a school event with me, and she ended up, um, you know, actually singing at this school concert with someone's mom who was a harpist. And this woman, um, I mean, basically just started chatting with my mom, and she was like, hey, that's cool. And, you know, uh, yeah, and she was like, my, I'm teaching my daughter how to play. It's really fun. And coincidentally, there was someone in our town who had a little tiny folk harp from Ireland that her husband had brought back for her saying, here you go, honey, everything you've always wanted, an Irish folk harp. And she's like, it's really pretty, but I don't want to play it. So, you know, put two and two together. And, um, you know, I, I started I started harp lessons. Uh, my mom just was sort of like, well, what do you what do you think? And I mean, um, looking back on it, I now see how this was such a perfect match because I was a rather hyperactive child. Um, and, no, really? Um, yeah, it's crazy, right? I mean, because, <laughs> like, I'm so antisocial. No, but it was, there was something that I loved that was about the tactile and visual and kinesthetic, um, you know, approach to, to playing and using my body, and it, it was very grounding. Um, the only thing I didn't love about it at first was that it seemed like a very solitary thing. I was going to say lugging it around, maybe. Well, that could be a thing. Well, again, that's why you start small. They get you in that way, and then you realize you have to get a bigger car, and, the and then a big... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a whole thing. Like, you know, what you can, honestly, you can rent a harp from, like, 50 bucks a month, or you can buy one at 150000 You know, I mean, that's basically the entire price range. Um, but of course, even as a professional, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I, you know, my instrument is easily, you know, it's basically like you equate it with like a, a good car. You know, if you, if you want an instrument that works, you know, get a Honda Civic, maybe 20 K if you want, you know, if you want something bigger, you know, Jeez. next level. Yeah. With the harp. I got to believe there's a lot of different materials that it can be made of today with carbon fibers and uh, mm -hmm. it's also with wood. That's and right. So appreciable sound differences between these different materials? Um, yes, absolutely. Especially that they did recently come out with a carbon fiber harp. I have not had the opportunity to play it yet, but people who gig a lot, especially if you're like doing like street plant performing, yeah, you they want gotta be tough as nails. Really like tough, yeah. So I've heard that is good. It is a very. It's definitely not something that you like play in orchestra. You know, for that you need the the big guns. You know, the the you know, basically. Walnut, mahogany, maple, and birch. These are most of the kinds of wood that the, the harp is made of. Um, and, uh, you know, generally a lot of us play Lion and Healy. Lion and Healy is like the Steinway of harps, you mm -hmm, could say. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people are like, okay, so do you like play on your own harp when you go? You know, how do you, how do you move it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there was a time back before 9-11 when you, apparently you could easily, you could literally go to the airport with your harp harp trunk, like a mm -hmm. big, huge thing, oh, pardon, and you would um, just uh, check it, and you would arrive on the other side with your harp. Well, I know Michaela had problems when she was oh, playing boy. in Europe because she had to get a harp there. That's right. That's right. It's, That's right. And and now, thank goodness, we have things like on Facebook, like the Harp Borrowing Club, yeah. Harp Exchange, yeah. where often you're like, I'm going to be in Poland for two weeks. Can anyone help me? You know? Yeah. I'd love to put that. I'd love to list that yeah. I'm going to be in Netherlands, Antilles, and somebody this was, fly into Harp. For this, yeah. <laughs> this was a huge problem for the Rochester Philharmonic Youth yeah. Orchestra. Every oh my time gosh, they went to you're Europe. Right. Because you know, it was and it wasn't just harp; it was timpani as well. Mm -hmm. You know, but sure, there was yeah, you always have to borrow a, and, and triangle and, and getting the double bases <laughs> packed up was, was always. Well, I always I had my one like nitpick about that song, "The Minstrel Boy," too, because it's wild harp song behind him. That's the national instrument of Ireland. Nobody's going to take it in battle with them because if they fall, it'll desecrate it. Ah. Leave me alone. It's I a good thing a harp isn't like that, that instrument. No. <laughs> yeah. it's, well, and that's the thing. Yeah, it, it, it was it was too challenging. Even now, I mean, you've heard probably horror stories of people checking their instruments. Even, you know, I mean, basses still have to travel with their own instruments. Yeah. And it is such a risk and such a, I mean, they are been, at times oh, at, they open their case and the, the, the neck is cut in back. J.B. Vandermark. Uh, teachers at Round Top. This is he is a double bassist, mm -hmm. a professor at, um, at at the Eastman School of Music. Just got the Eisenhart Teacher of the Year. Brilliant man, one of the best double bassists in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, and he teaches at Round Top, which is in Texas. And That's what right. he does, is he actually boxes up his double bass and ships it ahead of him. And he just it does not go on a plane. He truck ships it. And now this is harder because having a harp 
having more than one harp at the price tag that you have right. to be able to pack up a, a harp and sh and ship it ahead of you, it would be difficult. Yeah, I mean, I did it once when I was like playing a concerto with the Pacific Symphony, and I was in uh, in uh, L.A. or you know Orange County, and I was also going to be doing a couple recitals, and I needed to rent a car and move it, but luckily the orchestra was willing to pay for the shipping, which is on its own five hundred dollars. Oh. Yeah. So it is no joke. You really have to be willing to like be like, I really need my own heart because other than that, like you can use another one. But, How long does know. it take to tune? Do you have to tune it before every performance? Yeah, we, you know, theoretically, you know, tune it about as often as a violinist would tune, you know. But wow. um, what's nice is that it does, I mean, these days the harp actually does stay in tune really well. I mean, as long as, like, you have a relatively, like, in the olden days it was hard. We didn't have temperature control, you know, and the strings were uh, less, uh, were not as strong or and well, you know. So it, it used to be, like, tuning was a real, you know, there's that horrible saying, like, harpists spend half their life tuning and the other half playing out of tune. It's like, <laughs> oh, God, help are the, us. Are the pins similar? Similar to what we would see on a grand piano or on a piano? Um, they are, yeah, they are. They're just, um, they do, yeah, I mean, but they're they're more pliable in the sense that, yeah, like, so basically, if I'm going to tune, like a, a, like, a super solid tuning, like, super solid checking everything, like, doing, you know, by ear and all that, like, it would be, like, 15 minutes. That's not if I'm going to do, like, a quick tune-up, five how many strings? Yolanda Kononasis seven, commented... 47. Uh, 47. And, and Yolanda Kononasis commented yes. that she feels that the harp strings as of late have not been as robust. Oh, yeah, and that was the whole a lot thing, of right? Breakage. Yeah, that, there, were, there were a few years... Where, yeah, not to get into too many of the, you know, details with how, the, you know, the, you know, cow gut and whatnot, but there was, uh, there were a few years where it wasn't a good product. It wasn't uh, a good batch, so to speak, and they've been able to fix I think that, that now. We were have, but, we yeah. had uh, Anna Dunlap. Um, yeah, that's right. And we had her on Backstage Pass, and we're in the middle of, a, of an interview portion of Backstage Pass. Oh, yeah. And we hear this whack, wing, everybody jumped. And I said, and that was the sound of a harp string break. That's no. great. Oh, yeah. It's like the moment. We, oh, my gosh. When I first and she was not at the harp, by the way. So. Oh, my God. When I first joined the Dallas Opera, I mm. would have strings break every once in a while because, well, hey, it happens. And and people were not used to it. So they were like, Grace, like, what is, is your harp okay? Like, why? I was like, yes, it breaks strings. It's okay. It's totally normal. And I, but it's, it is really scary because sometimes, yeah, it is, it is in the middle of a performance. I mean, once I was literally on stage playing for Kofi of Five and the harp plays in every movement and I broke a string right before the downbeat. And I was like, okay. So first of all, we always have our strings with us. That is rule number one. Yes. You always have to have them literally right there, not backstage, right there next to you. And you have to have pretty much every single string there, just in case. I mean, the chances of it being a wire string, very, very, very slim. But, you know, chances of being up here, much higher. So at least I'll always have like a couple <laughs> octaves. <laughs> and even that's risky. Anyway, so um, I had to, it, basically it was a second octave A. And I knew that in the second movement, I was about to play, there's actually this big excerpt in the second movement of Bergogi 5. Boo -da -da -da, boo -boo -da -da -da, boo -ba -da -da, a, A. It was that A, literally. And, um, you know, sometimes you can sort of cheat with the harp because you, if, let's say, it's an A flat, then you mm. can say, hmm, I don't have an A flat, but let me use a G sharp instead. Right, because it's going to sound the same. You could pedal it too, couldn't you? Well, that's yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah, mean. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we could make, and I can get into pedals too. But essentially, we can we have the ability to double a sounding pitch, you know. But in this case, there is only literally one A. There is only one A string. So basically, I I, I like I, I take it out of the bag first. I find it, and then I pull the heart back, play. But and I'm still having to like listen and stuff. And then I like I start tying the knot, pull the heart back, play. And then I stick the little string in, I tie it through, pick the heart, play. And then <laughs> and then finally, I get it up. And then of course, I have to. Do Tune it, and the chances sure. of it then staying in tune are very slim, especially, and it's also before the slow solo, so you can imagine, bam, 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 you know, how bad would Watch that for this yeah. when you go to RPO shows. I know. And go up to See Grace afterwards you and say, yeah, you found it. <laughs> well, someone did after this performance. Thank God I got it up. I came in, miraculously it was in tune, and someone afterwards was like, oh my God, are you okay? I like yeah. just saw what happened and I am in awe. And it was one of these, it was in the Arsh Center in Miami, so there were people sitting right behind us. Yeah, there's all sorts of fun things that happen in the yeah, it was it, Anna, um, you, you all amazed me at, at your agility in doing this. You know, when, it, when that happened, and it was like nothing happened. I had to explain what it was because Anna wasn't. And then there was a piece, and it was maybe only five minutes or something. And then she was going to be playing. And I watched that girl just hop up, 
pull out the strings because again, you have all the strings there. Pull out the bad string, which part of which is still by my desk at work, and restring the harp and get it tuned and everything like that. And and Gene and I were just in awe. Yeah, we were in awe. (laughs) We sort of have to be like harp ninjas. Why guitarists just go? I broke a string. You got a string. Got a string. (laughs) Stuff. But I'll try. I want to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. I tried this question with Michaela. Yes. Michaela Davis. We're actually at her band member Sugar Shane at a show with his band Honeymoon Phase over at Bernanzio, and Michaela went all technical on me, and I got lost. I just asked her. I was talking to her, and I said, "How do you transcribe something to your instrument?" And she got really excited, but she forgot I have no idea what I'm talking about and she started oh, getting all okay. textical yeah. so how like if you mm-hmm. take a piece how do you transcribe it to harp totally what kind of challenges are there well you know um I guess the first the first thing that we have to deal with again because we have pedals so essentially the pedals are not like piano pedals you know piano pedals of course change the duration by the way Nina are you a musician too uh, I played the piano. Yeah, we're was... going to oh talk about that. Okay, yes, well, we this are. Is the, the, we can bounce off of each other here because, I mean, again, I started with piano. Then we can piano. go into the Ken, then we can go into the youth yeah. music stuff. That's yeah, right. Yeah, oh, my gosh, exactly. So, essentially, the harp without the pedals is like the white keys on the piano, right? Yeah. Just all, you know, sort of naturals, right? But um, it's when the pedals come into play that you have basically one pedal for every pitch, A, B, C, D, F, G. Right. And with each one of those, you can basically just set whatever key you need. So if you're playing in C major, again, everything's in natural. If you're playing in D major, you have two sharps. All this to say that um, essentially when you have a lot of chromaticism, when you have a lot of, the, you know, going sharps to flats or vice versa, you need to be able to actually sort of write in an extra line of instructions just for your feet. So we have almost like three lines that we're reading, and it just basically looks like C natural, F sharp, D sharp, E flat, and we have little pedal diagrams. Um, But, you know, aside from that, we really do, we can play most any piano music, keyboard music. It's all, um, you know, the harp, thank goodness, because we have these pedals. We didn't always have pedals. And without all the pedal options, we could only play in like seven keys, maybe. You would right? be modal at that point. Yeah, you know, just a few options. And we would get creative. And, and But then once the, basically, once the, the, the full pedals came into play, and by the way, I mean, what people don't see is that on the inside of the harp, there are 2,000 moving pieces, 2,000 little mechanisms, levers, rods that start in the base of the harp and go all the way up through the column, then down into the curve oh, of I the didn't neck. Know that. And then, and then that's how it works. Basically, the pedal then causes a little mechanism, the one that was getting stuck in my Leia hairnets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll never circle. forget that. I was like, yeah. dedication. But, yeah, <laughs> when they, they get stuck, because what they do is they, they twist. And by twisting, they change the length of the string. So they make it shorter or longer. So it goes bow, 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 bow. So conversely, I've seen Michaela reach over and she's just physically pitch bending. Put, pitch bending on a harp. That's right. We can pitch bend. So you cool. remember Sweet Galactique? Yeah. This yeah. piece I played I, I, yeah. I played on Julia's backstage yep. pass. It's yep. so fun. So cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do remember I'm the person who got all your trivia questions on your harpy hour show wrong every week. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Well, that's that, I, I, your, it's commitment, sort of your commitment to your fans having to drink those beverages every week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was such hard work drinking I those know, beverages it was, with Julia. It was like you were really all out. Out. But that was really fun during I'm COVID because so we didn't have. I used to tune in. It's like I had all my friends written down all week for their online you're, shows, you're and we so had Harpy good. Hour. That's so kind. I mean, that was so much fun, and I I can't wait for us to maybe do that in person soon, right? Several years ago, I did a show with Sandy uh, Giannini here locally. Oh, love her. I'm seeing her later today. Tell her I said yeah, hi. Heart we did. Um, Fringe Fest, and we did a show at Bernunzio's, and it was just for spoken word and harp. I did the spoken word. I wrote the show. Is the harp loud, hopefully? She was background (laughs) music for the different periods that I was speaking about. Wow. How cool was this? Brilliant. Bernunzio's is a great place to play in, too. I have um, an MP3 of it. I'll send it to you. It's really cool. Yeah, and Bernunzio's, I love Bernunzio's. I mean, for years and is Remember, Maybird had that show there at yeah. Sam. Obviously, yeah. it's just I, I love small music shops and just blessing oh, it's during this great. time. I know we should head out there, but so so yeah. But Nina, you um, you sort of 
you sort of get, I mean, I feel like the thing that I missed, so, or actually the thing that I loved about the having pedals was I didn't have to remember what key I was in. Because when you're a pianist, you have to remember all the yeah, flats. You have to, yeah, I, I, was so thinking, there, I was thinking a lot of the dirty work is done by your herp. So you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to remember to play that black key That's because right. it's all set for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really hard. I, I remember it was like a struggle to learn the pedals and stuff. I, I think I never really got it. <laughs> I, I quit before I could totally you mean get it. Because uh, I you played play, harp? No, I played the piano. Oh, you played like oh, with pedals. Those, pedals. Oh, those pedals. Yeah, yeah. the pedals were like really hard to understand. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was a struggle. Especially because, like you said, we had like a line it's just for the pedals. Like, That's right. to do like right, left, Mark. the one in the middle. Yeah. Like, it was horrible. It's like patting your tummy yes. and rubbing your head yes. and then switching. And where are you, um, what, what, what are you doing now? Um, I started to play the ukulele uh, during the quarantine because I was bored. So I was like, um, so I might fun. try. Um, it was really nice. Student. She's a student. She's here the past year. She and... picked the best year ever to yeah. come to the country. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then when do you go back to France? So I'm going back next Friday. Oh, um, mon <laughs> Dieu! <laughs> um, uh, Peut-être uh, nous, nous pouvons parler en français un petit peu. Pas de problème, ça me va. When do you voyage? Or, or, well, are you excited? Are you, how do you feel about it? I'm excited moving? to go back and see yeah. my parents, my sister, of course. Um, also sad to not, yeah. you know, stay here in summer because it's a time period I never saw to because I always go back during the summer, but I'm really excited to go back to Wasn't Paris. it too? We were going to have you on the show when Vicky was going to be on, but I think right. some, this is when COVID started. Yeah. Didn't you, wasn't something like you were stuck in the house for two weeks after she coming over? She was quarantining, over? yeah. Yes, I was. Oh. Well, I remember when I first arrived last March, like the school where like, Schools were still open, shops, and I spent four days at Aquinas, mm -hmm. and then it shut down, and I was, like, at home, and mm -hmm. I remember I had the choice to go back or just to stay. I was like, well, I'm here now, and yeah. I knew the situation was worse in, in Europe, in France, especially yes. with COVID. Yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm going to stay here. And you could get the <laughs> vaccine, right? Well, it's really complicated. I know in France, like, maybe half of the population is vaccinated, and it's, like, in majority people 60 years old or older. Okay. Um, oh, that's because they that's are good. giving like priority to people you know who could be like impacted by COVID. Um, oh, okay, that's good. My sister might get the vaccine now. Now, were you able to get the vaccine while you were here? I got vaccinated here. Oh, good, 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 that's good. good. But can you travel without it? I, I think you can to get to Europe because I have the vaccine, but they're still asking for PCR tests. Uh, even if you're vaccinated, mm -hmm. um, so I think you might be able to travel if you have a negative COVID test. Um, was Christmas hard? Oh. Well, I went back for Christmas. You did? Yeah, I did. Oh, so yeah. Two weeks. Well, how has flying been, Grace? I know you've been mm -hmm. traveling. You've been to Denver and all oh, over the place. Oh, my gosh. You know, at first, I mean, let's see. My first time really on a plane was February, and that was before I was vaccinated. So I was a little... A little scared. I just, I mean, it was sort. It was just very surreal. You yeah. know, it was very, very, very yeah. surreal. Um, <clears throat> and on, I felt great on one of the flights, and then one of the other flights was pretty crowded. Um, and I was mm. a sort of like, mm, but um, I mean, everything was fine, and and all of that. Um, but um, I did end up upgrading on the way back to first class. I mean, it, thankfully, it wasn't like that much more. But I was like, you know what? I will definitely pay for an extra six inches or you know, our, twelve inches. Our of space. daughters in in Washington D.C. and we have been ultra fussy about yeah. which airlines she should go on because some airlines have been far more careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Than other airlines, That's right. and and we've been pretty adamant. She did take one trip home on one of the non-approved airlines, and she was appalled. She was so oh, she was like oh god. It was. She said it was bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was really hard. The other two were tremendous, but this one, it was like you said, it was well packed in, mm -hmm. and nobody could afford to upgrade her, oh. and and it was just uncomfortable. And she said that the the um. The, the airline um, attendants were just nasty. So, I they're like, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, uh, you want something to drink? Because they're yeah. very stressed out. It is funny. Yeah. Yeah. You COVID in your drink. Uh, <laughs> you, you want like a Corona? Have a side of <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. It's weird because I know when I went back, uh, we had like a seat between, uh, I don't know if it right. was, like we had a seat between us and 
I don't know. I saw people. I don't know if you saw that in the plane. The people with the entire suit mm-hmm. of uh, COVID protection. Oh, thing. like like I a hazmat, hazmat suit. No, I, I, I saw one like here a, actually. Somebody at a Wegmans came out wearing a hazmat suit one day. <laughs> but you know, like the yellow suits, like the scientists yeah. Yeah. wear. Yeah. Right. I was like, why? <laughs> Just wear the uh, mask and it's enough. <laughs> but I it's know. crowded. Well, like, it's... I was really surprised. No, I, well, that I the have planes a, are crowded. A friend of mine is a pianist, yeah, and he was <laughs> doing international travel, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he had a hat. He had goggles, he had a face mask, and he had a face mask. He had one of those plex, plastic mm-hmm. face mm-hmm. screens <laughs> and a face mask on oh top of that, and then wrapped himself up in a scarf to hear. You know, at a certain like, point, yeah. it's just, it's it's almost like whatever is going to make you feel, you know, say, it's yeah. almost like even the airport security and out itself, of Walmart, it's sort of a charade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to, I mean, with some of the new orchestra protocols that we're sort of returning to, like in Santa Fe Opera this summer, we are asking people to sit closer because we have vaccinations, we have masks, we have testing, we have a lot of stuff. But what there is are the who capacity are for RPO this fall? I haven't really looked at it I think it's it going to be, you know, I mean, we haven't, I mean, obviously yeah, things are things yet. are going to continue to change, but right now, obviously we're outdoors, which is awesome. And that is the perfect transition to in-person for us, I think, um, and I think for, for everyone. And as we go into the fall, I mean, again, we'll see like how the vaccination rates are going. We'll see how, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume, you know, it sounds like the Excelsior Pass is going to become pretty standard and there might be some sort of proof of vaccination. Mm-hmm. I know there's probably also going to potentially just be different sections like there are right now. Yeah, yeah. I've heard about that, yeah. that they've been doing in some places um, using something like the Excelsior Pass. They've yeah. been doing two sections with and without. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What is, uh, I was asking about, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm picturing the Philharmonic on stage. Yeah, yeah. First of all, does Kodak Hall got a number now that people can attend? I know I heard 300 at one point, no mm. more than 300. Well, you know, I mean, is that again, a bit I, increased? We are not, you know, I can't speak for Eastman itself because we are, well, we're not in there right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and we basically, you know, we, we borrow the space from them. So um, I, and, and I, you know, I, I know that we're going to continue to have conversations about this. Um, but for for example, I mean, most likely whatever the the guidelines are right now, you know, um, from what from my experience so far on like our patron services and marketing committees, like it's it can be really challenging to keep up with the changing guidelines, of course, because by the time you have new ticketing and seats and blah 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 and pods, then suddenly they're like, you don't need pods anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the thing I've been saying about this, too, is this has never happened to us in our lifetime. And we have to just adjust and adjust as we go. And And it's hard to adjust when you've sold 2,000 tickets. That's right. right. And and when you've got, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm speaking as a mom whose daughter had to uninvite 50, 60 people to her wedding um, in September. These are... How do you say to someone who has laid out cash, oh, you can't come? Yeah. Well, then you, yeah. Well, in this case, we refunded. Yeah, mine, I've tried to donate or whatever. Yeah, that's, you that's really But good. I was going to ask you, this is the or question I asked credit. Herb, yeah. and he mm-hmm. didn't give me the straight answer. Okay, like when you did Star Wars, Darth Vader's March, is that horse Mars from the planets, basically? Oh, <laughs> You know um, what? John Williams is the biggest thief, so if you, you know, hear Herb it, said to me, Herb true. said, Herb used the line, you know, okay, musicians borrow good musicians steal <laughs> that and, I'm, a, and i'm convinced that's, 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 that's mars from that. horse to planets well it could be it's, a tribute it's very similar okay so we can sing both right so mars is um dun dun three four five dun dun in a live performance here on the show, yes. which is awesome. All right, yeah, but then, then I'll do Darth Vader. Dun, and then Darth Vader. Yeah, so dun, 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 yes. Well, what's, what's the, it's, what was like but a so difficult? You know, what was like a difficult <laughs> piece to uh, play out of like those films and everything? What was like? Did you think? Yeah, oh my it's gosh! Pop, I know there's oh. a lot of. <clears throat> this is like the Harry Potter. The, there's a lot of like John. It's not easy. What difficult. was like really difficult? It is some of the most thrilling and exhilarating playing for me. It is very reminiscent of opera because, again, we are. I mean, obviously we're following the conductor, but the conductor is following the click track, and you know. In that sense, like we, the you know, just like the con- conductor would be following the singers or something. So they're sort of like, okay, we have to go with this. Um, but we are not using click tracks, which makes it really, really, 
really interesting. Um, I think the the best part is just how you see the composers literally like bringing the bringing the the picture into sound um, and creating this whole dimension. The um, you know and and again like opera. Okay, so Wagner he would tell the musical story with mo- motifs mm-hmm. themes. Mm-hmm. You know, so like Siegfried. You know, whatever. Dun da da. You know what? This is you know. Um, that's that character. And then the, you know, the love theme, like Leia. Da, 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 da. It's like you can actually experience the story without words and even without visuals, you know, just yeah. by the music itself. And I will say, I go to, I think the last regular show I went to see before the big lockdown was Masa Gorski. And that was really fun. And I go to both, and I always took my dad, loved the Christmas shows. But is this, mm, I also so look fun. at this the way with the, the cinematic things bringing in more use to classical well, music. I will say, um, in, in, in real deep deference to the musicians on the stage, and I know this is certainly true with the Bugs Bunny stuff, which I know you've also played, that stuff was never meant to be performed that way. And this is yeah. super hard on the musicians. It's the reverse. Because yeah, exactly. it's, it's the idea of running the film with the music underneath those musicians are going into their LA and they're doing like a 15 minute stretch at best. And then, yeah. and then eventually it's all put together as opposed to, like you said, it's in reverse. So this is the horn players, for example, just say their faces are falling off after star Wars because oh, it's so it's loud never, too. It's never was never meant or built to be played. Well, yeah, and, and, but it's true. I mean, you're going to feel that way after an opera as well. It's just yeah. the length, the du- duration, the force. You know, yeah, the, it's the just you need a different of kind of stamina. It's, it's a real, yeah. And a mentally, too. There. Mentally, again, just like opera, it's like it's like all this changing meter. You know, it's yeah. like one, two, three, and a pause. A one, two, three. You know, and you're like, ah! the whole time. I mean, all, all over the place. But, it, it, I mean, again, for an ADHD harpist, <laughs> yeah. it's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, that was, you know, and this is the comment. Uh, we had one of the conductors of the Bugs Bunny in. Uh, for an interview, and this is the comment that he made, is that you have to be an extremely good orchestra, which Rochester oh, yes. is. He said oh, yeah. one of the best <clears throat> that he's seen with the Bugs Bunny shows, because he said that the way these things are put together was never in mm-hmm. the composer's intention. And, and you know, that's, I mean, kudos to the mark? RPO, that, that, mm-hmm. that the RPO is so very, very good. I'm yeah. telling you, mm-hmm. these film conductors, and there are conductors, and their whole gig yeah. is that they go around with films, and they yeah. do these films all over the world. And, mm-hmm. and they have told me time and time again, this is one of the best orchestras to do films no, that's with. True. Yeah. Was Mark Waters at the helm of that show, the Bugs Bunny show that no. happened here? There no. was one, I think, last year or two years ago. No, they, they they have a special guy who does that. I don't know his in? name. Okay. Well, I think one of the 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 best um, sort of one of the, the biggest benefits to doing this kind of programming is that it is um, a new entry point for audiences That's who have exactly. not been into the theater and before. If you see kids, how many of these shows dressed up? And oh, they it's bring the everybody. best! It's I like did. at the Christmas Dude, shows. I got to play the Star Trek, the new Star Trek films when I was in Houston. Both of them with the cute Captain Kirk dude. What's that actor's name? Chris Pine. Yes. Chris Pine. Oh my gosh, sorry. It was the <laughs> most fun I think I've ever had. And everyone came in decked out and it was packed. Yeah. And again, like the only thing is that then I think a lot of a lot of us, you know, maybe on the administrative side or, you know, we think, okay, great. So because they came to see this, then they're gonna want to come here Beethoven next week. And like, I mean, maybe, maybe, but really what the you know data shows is that when people come for the first time to a concert experience and have a good experience there, they're most likely to come back for the exact same experience. Which doesn't mean that they can't eventually transfer, but you have right. to have a lot logical next step so you then you say yeah. okay if you like this maybe you'll try these That's pop series and at least they know about it too but yeah, yeah mm-hmm. and, and, and i will also add to that financially that this is one of the really good things about it because it fills the seats and it brings money into the coffers so that when you step out mm-hmm. and you do something a little more experimental more risky, yeah, yeah, more yeah. risky you know what the more end. unknown mm-hmm. that that if that doesn't get as big a fill in your seats, it's okay because 
John Williams took you know care you know of there's that. an analogy yeah, I'll use right. like take an Adam Driver for example he does the Star Wars movies but then he does a lot of risque stuff a lot of like indie stuff so there's some actors like Burt Lancaster used to do it. they do the popular movie so they could do their own projects right and that's like it, that. very that's right. and, I mean I like it all and that's what case. I just like, like I want to bring use into I think people really dig it you so, know? It's so I, true. Wa- yeah. I want to mm-hmm. say that the yeah. orchestra was it the first time you ever did this unnerving when like the audience started booing and hissing oh like, <laughs> when they <laughs> when like the Slytherin house appears or something and, and, and people start hissing we, uh, <laughs> I love I, it and we're like yes no, we want them to talk. We want them to laugh. Yeah. We want them to sing along. They even say it when it starts. Boo, cheer, hiss. That's right. What do you yeah. want to say, Kat? No, Yeah, exactly. No, no, I was just going to throw Nina a question about what is it yes. that they are listening to and, yeah. and what are the kids I listening to? I definitely want to know that. That's yes. a great question. Well, I I can talk for like every teenager in the world, but I, yeah. I feel like today the popular songs like the R&B songs, you know, this kind of thing, maybe especially coming to summer, uh, Latino songs. Um, and I feel like incorporating these kind of s- s- songs and like kind of like s- themes in the orchestra would probably bring more sh- like young people uh, ah, in the old way. Ah. And I think it would be a good way to maybe introduce young people to what he, what is real music, you know? Yes. Well, it, you know, with, uh, they know that Ben Folds is coming mm-hmm, to play with the right. RPO, yeah. which is a great crossover. But I do want to bust a myth right now. And that's the idea of bringing young kids mm-hmm. into the orchestra is a myth, and it, and 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 it, I think it I think it's a pipe dream. You know, the, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra has been around for how long, right? A mm-hmm. gazillion years, a mm-hmm. hundred years ago, and they always track. They're mm-hmm. the best tracking orchestra in the country. A hundred years ago, the average listener attendee was fifty-five. Mm-hmm. Ten years ago, in Chicago, the average attendee was. 55. Mm-hmm. So I think there is a whole level. I was talking mm-hmm. to a coworker yesterday, and she said, You know, I've started listening to classical on the radio. Now I looked at her You're and like, said, Thank you. How old are you? 55. I said, Not trying to be wrong. <laughs> oh, no. 56. Oh. <laughs> And, and wow. I think there is, I think there is something that is, I don't want to say genetic, but a moment when your ears need a different sound, a different energy, which is what she was that saying. That is true, yeah. And so we can work to definitely expose kids to classical music. And I know this, this is very big on Andrea Stelf's agenda mm-hmm. is, is bringing the, the, the orchestra into the school. Well, but I think the idea yeah. that we're magically going to have a whole well, lot it's, it's of... It's not magical. It's not magical. What are Thoughts, you, Nina? I think, I think the problem is that a lot of people like, you know, 8 to 16 years old see the opera as like classical music, uh, Beethoven and stuff. Like, and yeah. people are not feeling into that anymore. Yeah. But I feel like now the orchestra can play a lot of other songs with different themes like you know kind of popular songs to introduce them to old um classical music maybe introduce like some latino songs to beethoven things mm-hmm. and i feel like mm-hmm. mixing these two like themes and yes. songs would be a good way to introduce people maybe like introduce them mm-hmm. to what well, they know there are and many what they entry don't. points they're meant to, yeah okay. maybe no i was just thinking yeah, they're, re- they're redoing now west side story mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. So all of that Bernstein music is going to become new again to a whole new generation of kids. You know? Yeah, I can remember as a, as a kid, Roch Sterian, them putting me on. You know, the school's putting us on buses when we were really little. Yeah. Howard Hansen standing on the stage at the Eastman, telling us about the chandelier and about the orchestra, and this is what this I mean. Fifty-five years old was your benchmark, right? It hooked me, and I was a kid in, in grammar school. And I found Mazagorsky pictures in exhibition just by luck, and I was like, "Boom!" There. That was and it. I would say, "Read the lives of the great composers." They were the rock stars of the time. They were actually a lot worse than the rock stars, yeah. Yeah. right? But, well, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, this. There are so. I mean, this is so great to have so many all these different viewpoints because essentially, I think the biggest thing that we need to realize is that there are many, many different audiences, mm-hmm. and for each audience, they need something a little bit different exactly. um, and again what is that entry point point? and one of the ones I want to ask you about Nina is um, how um, do you think orchestras can use social media in a way to better appeal to your age group because I I mean I can say at least from 
personally from this last year, branching out into TikTok <laughs> and like and even Instagram in, in, in ways I was suddenly seeing so much more classical music. I was seeing a lot of young people. I was seeing a lot of really incredible talent and, and art and collaborations, literally. Do you know you can duet with someone on TikTok? You literally can duet with Beyonce. You yeah. can take her video and overlay yours yeah. on top of hers and put it out there in the world. Yeah. You know, there's been so much copyright and privacy that under, for understandable good reasons, but in the social media age, I, 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 I'm feeling like the more that we can share what we're doing in just the smaller, more visual, interactive formats, maybe the better, you know, we'll connect. But what do you, what do you think? Uh, I think the principal thing would be to track people on social media that young people use. I know a lot of things about opera and classical music are taking place on Facebook yeah. and Twitter, and I know no like people from my generation are really using it anymore. Okay. So it would be better, I think, to put a lot of things on Snapchat. Yeah. Snapchat is a big thing, like you know okay. the public stories. Instagram and mm. TikTok, of course. Okay. And the good thing with TikTok is that you can make people participate with you. So mm. you can have your TikTok account, do something, and ask people to do it you. And you can discover new talents and introduce them to classical music. Like, oh, I want to do that too. Oh, I, will, that's... I, I want to play this song on the piano too. I want to, you know, yeah, start yeah. piano. But I think I, I do want to, again, play devil's advocate because it's a large leap <laughs> between a five minute and a Mahler symphony. And and this well, again this goes to what you're saying about the many, yeah. many different audiences. That's right. And I think with that I know orchestras and, and I we're going through this by the way for for classical radio. So, you know, we have we have much of the same sort of struggle on what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. I think orchestras need to understand and do understand that uh, a packed pops show doesn't necessarily mean a packed Philharmonics show. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. I mean, I wish people would take. I always say, go to what you like, but then try things you don't. You might like them. And that's the, that is important and very that's what I've always really done. Cool. That's so why I found need, so exactly. much. And so we need more stepping stones, right? Mm. We need a way to get. Yeah, go ahead, Kim. Do you have? Does the Philharmonic have a person specific select that handles and knows yeah. intimately all of those so social media. medias? Yeah. Um, we do not currently have anyone on staff who is um, doing that um, but we actually have some new we have a, a lot of new um, you know changeover happening right now um, and I think actually we did just get um, a Snapchat geolocator for mm -hmm. our last concert which is awesome because again you know I think one thing that we need to realize is that the social social media is really um the sort of free advertising yeah. <laughs> that you got people to participate to post right. that you your tags your yeah. then all of their friends know about it yeah. i think that also there are behaviors that we need to to think about doing away with yeah yeah things yeah. like texas and let's talk about not drinking in the hall do you say things like texas texas Tuxes, yes. <laughs> I am so done with taxes. <laughs> oh, that, that too. Um, I think that, yeah, I, it, yeah it no taxes. Oh my gosh, you know, so done. There, there's this whole. Now, first of all, I asked really asked Andrea Stelz, "Is it time to take a to, to, to yeah. the tux?" And he's like, "I don't know. I like oh, them. He looks a good one. Yeah, he <laughs> likes them. But you know, the whole feeling, and I bet you feel this." Of the stiff formality of the dressing up and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. It's kind of a, a you know, a, a, it, it sort of puts people off a little. I think the problem is that we, I think the big problem, and I think it's the same thing for every kind of old things or people people see at all things is that we have stereotypes and judgments about what it is a lot, you know, a lot of teenagers think that it's super long you that's dress right. up so formally in like dresses and a suit and stuff and that's I think that's why a lot of teenagers are like mm, I don't want yeah, like, to I want to wear a tux to a Ramon show I would have loved to have done <laughs> no, that they would rather go like to a, a concert where yeah. they can just dress like jogs and stuff you know and, and, uh, and not and, and, and the unspoken rules that the, if you violate it uh, yes. No clapping between movements. Oh well, my gosh. Yeah. We None had of this, like, a lovely shame. volunteer who was a little traditional, shall we say. And Sharon Isbin came in town to play Concierto de Rodriguez. And they applauded between every movement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was not happy. Oh. Mm. Well, she, she won't even let you shake her hand. You never hear more cowbell, though, do you? No, we mm -hmm. always hear more cowbell. 
what? I think these are unwritten rules. Hey, when Beethoven's Seventh was first performed, that allegretto finish, that beautiful movement, yeah. there was a screaming round of applause, and they had to play it again. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I they know. We need more and, of that. And what is wrong with that? What is wrong That's with right. somebody saying, you know, they really dug that. Let's do that again. Yeah. Can any it's, last words yeah, here? Yeah, no, it's, it's all changed. We Our orchestra of yesterday was very conservative, and today we're now talking orchestras of 2021, mm. where we've younger people, newer times, I think we're a lot more likely to see the orchestra of today doing Latino, doing rap, doing this, doing that, bringing in more and more music, music. Inter, you know, world music into the auditorium to bring in, hopefully, and it's going to take time, more and more of the kids to This is all keep. about equity and diversity. Yeah. Ah. This is all about making sure that the doors and the art form are open for everyone. And everybody who walks in those doors feels welcome. Yes. yes. Some yes. of the conservative here, things here. to fall away. Yes. That's right. And yes. you want to? Well, we're no, going to have to wrap up pretty no, soon. It's no, been don't. really fun. No, Nina but Nina wants to say something. I just think that a good example of how people bring young people now to history and orchestra and stuff is Hamilton. You know the yes. song, how they incorporated the Latino R&B and rap songs to oh, history, oh, and that brought so a lot of people to know Hamilton story. And I know now in high school, everybody knows. Everyone knows oh, Hamilton. You they've know, even Raza. done this with Metamorphosis. So, right? One translation had yeah. rapid it for like the the Furies. And stuff. But doing that with other so uh, historical yeah. characters, and historical I, thing, and yeah. orchestra would be a good way to make people know about the orchestra. And then, oh, I want to go listen to Mozart. Yeah, I was you know? so right. I was You're so, so right. surprised when I saw Hamilton because it was it was such a traditional mm -hmm. musical in a structure, but it was it was awesome. Exactly, it, and it was a brilliant. Push to the future. Yeah. For oh, that young people, form. come! You can, you can, you can do your so own fun. show and use like rap and R&B songs like you, you like, and put them in a Broadway show and impress people with that. And I think that was a good move because young people uh, saw that oh, we're, we're listening. Like people listen to us, and they're doing what we like on Broadway. You know? Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. But this has been really great. I so look. I wish wonderful. we could do this for three hours or so. I know. What are but, you doing later tonight? <laughs> 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 but one word answer, like from the musicians, is there any instrument you'd like to play that you never played before? Just one word. <gasps> oh. Not you, Clan. I send musicians. I'm not saying it either. <laughs> <laughs> what is the theremin? theremin. That theremin. one. I could teach you that one. one. I want to. I want to learn the theremin. Wait, what are you pointing to? That's Bob Moog. Ro that's Dr. Robert Moog. That's a photo of There's Dr. A photo Robert, of Robert Moog. Moog in the studio here. Who invented the synthesizer and his first instrument that he worked on, sold and. and sold essentially was the theremin no yes. yes and the second connection today was Trumansburg he's from Trumansburg yes he is <gasps> was he's passed and Nina any instrument you've done the ukulele what's next uh, I would like to try the electric guitar we could arrange yeah. that yes <laughs> we know she rock and roll like Queen I think I know that one, one. yeah Fun. I think I get that one do you sing one. too Sing a little bit. I try in the shower. Yes. Does it count? <laughs> uh, yes, it counts. Everyone sings. She yes. sings and she's very no. shy. So I, no. I, I, I would like I would like to, to, to point out that not everybody sings and if you do not want to hear me sing. No. I, I want to hear you sing, way, Julia. It's my it's my I life's sound wish. like Marianne Faithful when I sing. It's just <laughs> very <laughs> sweet. But segue now where we can find your show on ninety one point five uh, Monday Chloe. through Monday through Friday from uh, noon to three. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, classical 91.5. So 91.5 and 90.3 FM and you're, if you're in the Houghton area. And you can always stream us. Nina, you can stream us at wxxiclassical.org so you can listen to a little piece of Rochester at all All you listeners in France, there we go. And Grace, it's what's so coming good. up so much? Oh my gosh. what's co So I'm, I'm heading to um, Santa Fe in about... <sighs> a week uh, with my beloved Benjamin Krug. Um, we're going to get to play together actually in the orchestra which is going to be so fun. Um, and I am actually working on a podcast with uh, my my dear friend Cheryl Lozy Fetter, a wonderful harpist um, currently based in Detroit and um, this is a podcast called Strung Together. It is um, you and basically those puns hosted for these, by. I, I know <laughs> it's 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 so so bad. It's good, right? Yeah. It's no. Um. It's uh. It's basically um, conversations with some of the harpists of today who have 
just completely um, transformed the image and the um, the the genre of of the harp and used it to connect with so many new audiences, um, whether it's virtually or in um, the schools in East Cleveland um, or um, through TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just been really a fun way to stay connected awesome, with awesome. people and to feature just all the good stuff. The only thing happened. I'll stick in this Thursday too, right? Yeah, you're teaching. I am teaching. Um, oh, I'm so excited. I'm I'm doing um, a, a harp intensive for DePaul University with some uh, fantastic orchestral harpists from Chicago. Um, I'm also going to be doing a really fun class for the Harp Column Summer Academy on um, warming up with wellness. And we could find you, like all the stuff people who are interested, you're all over, as yes, you said. Yes, please. Yeah, follow me on um, Instagram at at the graceful harpist and also please follow at musicians of rpo this is the musician curated feed we actually are going to be joining tiktok soon <laughs> um, okay, i still have so, not taken the plunge on that one, oh but. it's fine you can just join you don't have to post yet but it is it is actually it's just so much more like it's user videos it's too, really yes. short and fun and again very content based um, but it's fun for us because uh, this is really how we want to continue to grow we're really just embracing our virtual friends and presence and really looking forward to connect with everyone in person and coming up this Thursday at Abilene the debut of Jukebox Riot it's our good old friends Kim Draheim Roy Stein it's all new psychedelic new band that's right it's going to be really good mm. can anything on the horizon for you uh, no, I'm just starting to get back out again. I think this Wednesday I'll be over at Abilene's to see... Uh, get his autographs, lend it, stay back, you know, don't yeah, try yeah, to no, it'll distance. Be good. It'll be good. Brian uh, Yarmel uh, is going to be playing Yarms. with... Uh, Yarms. 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 He's got a residency Yarms. there. I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting out again. It's been it's, a I'm long taking year. My, but Grace, at the end, we didn't haul your harp in here. You've talked about it. Yes, you were going to play didn't. a little piece that we sent in. What yes, is that? Yes, I um, actually... Did not decide yet. Um, no. Okay, this is um, going to be a mystery, gonna... a piece by Grace. Oh well, I, I can totally um, you leave know it what? as a surprise. Okay, <laughs> it'll 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 be a surprise. But you know what? I'd love to come back here another time with awesome. with the harp. That'd be super fun. Wow. If we can manage, like we have our like that's what we have Ken for to do the hard labor. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're like thanks you know so what? much. I gotta tell you. Every harpist I know is a Sherpa and mighty. Yeah. <laughs> these are oh, mighty Jenny. people. Oh. I watch these harpists and they're hoisting <laughs> and they're pushing <laughs> and they're toting. I'm speaking of the kazoo. Really harpists, really bass players, impressive. and keyboard, keyboard yeah. players. And yeah. Yeah. Bases, yeah. You bases. cannot be a wuss and play the harp. <laughs> and on that note, thanks for everybody and have fun.